Success for a modern day rugby club is as much about the business decisions made off the pitch as it is the players on it. After all, every club is a business, not just a team that meet once a week on match day. Producing a quality product, in this case great rugby, is their business objective, allowing them to build a stronger brand, larger fan base and generate revenue which can be reinvested in the club. Inside every Premiership Rugby Club exists a culture and a set of guiding principles that make it unique. Everyone's contribution matters from the administrative staff right through to the director of rugby. But how much can this contribute to success? Just having a good culture doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win every week. Having a good culture does start to permeate in the type of performances that you put out there. Um, that the paying fans can come and say, well, you know, we, we, we did lose tonight, but there's no way as I can say my team didn't give 100%. Something that you need to be able to feel, you need to be able to hear in everyone's language, everyone should be aligned, you know, the, the players should be able to articulate what the vision is, everyone should know really what you stand for. What, what underlies and underpins a successful culture in any club is the stability. If you look across, even just in the Premiership, the teams that have been successful year after year don't have a huge turnover in players. And the All Blacks have a great saying, good people make good players, uh, and I think that's very, very key. It's like the same in any organisation, you can only be as, as strong as, as, as your weakest link. Culture is really important. Um, I think as good as um, the players you've got, if people aren't buying into a shared culture or aren't buying into the same thing, then you're actually never going to succeed. Within all businesses, there is a blend of skill sets and demographics. You've got those young hotshots, experienced veterans, supporting players and of course the management. The difference between winning and losing might sometimes come down to the way people feel about their colleagues, team or leader, not just their performance on game day. You know, we've got something like 10 or 12 players that form like a leadership group, not a senior players group, a leadership group that really take it a part of their responsibility as well to make sure that everybody's uh, looked after. An happy player is normally is, um, is a player that's playing with a smile on his face. We've still got uh, 40 core players fr from last year, so the vast majority know our ways, our habits, our way of doing things, our, our culture as it were. Um, so because we're not diluting that too much, you're at sort of 20% coming in then those guys can, can cotton on pretty quickly because they're surrounded by the, the old culture and they know where we're trying to go. So the boys that we get into the academy at 14, 15, right the way through to the full-time academy players live by those core core values of the club. Our 18 year olds are training with our, our, our very best players every day. They're having breakfast, lunch, dinner with them as well and, and hopefully they rubbing shoulders with those players and, and getting to know those players that will rub off on them as well. There is no way to fully understand culture. What we do know is that a great culture is a catalyst to success. It generates loyalty, commitment, effort and passion. And these are all valuable tools on the journey to victory. Making culture tangible and spending time and effort to understand it is becoming ever more paramount. But how much time and effort are the big clubs putting into this? And why do they think it's important? From a planning and preparation point of view for this pre-season, that's probably the area of focus that was the greatest. I know that sounds bizarre, but you know, rugby almost wasn't the, the biggest focus. And I think um, understanding and identifying what our culture is was probably more important. We've actually got a small book that we, that we hand to our new players and we talk them through. We talk about the history of the club because we, we, we're a club that's built on 150 years of history. The club is very good at taking us out of um, this environment, taking us to different places, different countries um, for team bonding so that we get to know each other that bit more and, and as I said before I think that aids performance in, in the long run. Ultimately players drive culture and the individuals are surrounded by drive culture. Coaches can put things in place. It's having good people making good decisions in a team it is ultimately the most important thing. It's probably the biggest thing I've learned in my career is getting it right culturally. And if you get it right culturally, then you've got a good chance of performing and winning games you probably shouldn't win. It's obvious to see that culture, or at least the perception of it, is extremely powerful within Premiership Rugby Clubs. Many are investing time and money into understanding who they are in order to understand how they play. No club is prepared to stand still while genuine benefits result from a greater knowledge of their shared vision.